Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat and welcome to our Bread and Breakfast. Ako po ang inyong kapatid, Brother Joel, and I'll be the one to share God's Word for today's morning devotion. But before that, I just want to invite you to join me in a short prayer. Father, we thank you, O God, for this day. Thank you for this morning, O God, that you have given us. Thank you for the new life. And thank you, O God, for your Word that uh, will be uh, learning Panginoon sa umagang ito. I pray, O God, that uh, may you bless bless me, O God, that will deliver your word. And bless my lips, bless every word, Panginoon, na lalabas sa aking bibig. And I pray that uh, may your people, Panginoon, that who is watching this, may receive their portion, O God, for this day. Father, we thank you. And so we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So we are still in the book of Romans. And we are now in chapter 13. And I entitled this, Clothe Yourself with Lord Jesus Christ. So the whole chapter 13, I kinat ko po ito ng tatlong paragraph. And I've made these three points. So it's in verse 1 to 7 is my first point, And 8 to 10, my second point, And 11 to the last is my third point. So let us start. Here, in Romans 13, in the first verse, Paul starts to talk about our governing authorities. Paul is telling us to submit with our governing authorities, that we need to obey on the law of our governing authorities. We need to comply on the law of our authorities. In verse 1, it says here, Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. So, ito nga po yung sinasabi ko kanina na in the first verse, si Paul, ito yung una niyang binabanggit that we need to comply on our authorities, we need to submit ourselves with our authorities. Ano nga ba ito? What does it mean? Submit means we need to be under the law. Or we need to comply with with the law. Right? So, submit also means it's submitting with God. But the problem is that man always wants to be above the law. Right? Na gusto natin yung tayo yung nasa taas eh. Uh, ayaw natin maging under the law. And man, we always want to go against the law. Right? Kaya meron tayong mga rallies. Meron tayong mga rebellion. Kasi... Ito yung gusto natin, gusto natin mag-rebel. Ayaw natin sumunod sa mga batas ng ating authority. So, we we go against the law. And we also want to be the law, right? ba? Ito yung gusto, gusto natin eh, tayo yung batas. ba? Sabi nga, ba nung ano, ano, sa classroom may batas. <laughs> and so, we always want to be the law. We love to break the laws, right? Sabi nga dito, ba? we all... We always see dyan sa, sa, sa daan na bawal tumawid. Pero what do people do? Anong ginagawa ng tao? We still cross, right? Tayo pa rin na dumadaan. Pinalitan na nga yung, yung signage. Bawal tumawid dito. Nakamamatay. Does it change? Hindi, right? Tayo pa rin na tumatawid. Pinalitan na naman. Bawal tumawid dito. May namatay na. But nothing changed. It is because tayo mga tao, nandun yung yung kumbaga parang nature natin to break the law, right? To go against the law. Remember Adam and Eve, sila po yung pinakaunang tao na nakreate, right? Pero God has given them the rule that they can eat everything. Pwede nilang kainin ng lahat. Lahat na nang doon sa garden. But what did they did? Sabi ng Panginoon, kainin niyo lahat. Wag lang yung prutas ng tree of knowledge. Pero anong ginawa nila? They still ate, they break the law, and hindi sila nag-comply dun sa rule ng Panginoon. So innate na po sa isang tao na they break the law. But Paul is saying that we need to comply with the law. We need to submit ourselves with our authorities. Si Adam and Eve, sino ang authorities nila? It was God, ang Panginoon ng kanilang authority, but hindi sila nag-submit. They, not, they did not comply with the rules of God. So, ano pong nangyari? 
sin starts to come in, diba? People perish just like us if we do not if we do not comply with the laws, if we do not submit ourselves with our authorities. Same will be same will happen, diba? We will perish. Imagine ang isang country na walang law, walang authority. Imagine, pumatay ka, nagnakaw ka, what will happen? Nothing, right? Kasi tama ka. Kasi walang nagsasabi na ito, itong ginawa mong to ay bawal. Bawal yan, bawal to. So, there will always be chaos. Pag wala po tayong sinusunod na batas. Okay? So, it's very important that there is an authority and there is a rule or a law that we need to submit with or we need to follow. Amen? So our first point is, submit with our authorities. And in verse 1, it says here, Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. Sabi dito, everyone must submit himself. Everyone. Ikaw, ako, everyone po. Lahat po tayo, wala pong exemption, wala pong hindi pwedeng mag-submit. But God says, and Paul says, Everyone must. Everyone must submit. Mayaman man, mahirap. Lahat po tayo, we must submit. Sino nga ba ang ating mga authorities? It doesn't only mean when we say authorities, it is our government. But it can be our parents, our pastors in church, our boss in our workplace, our teachers in school, and our God in heaven. God is our ultimate authority. And anyone that has authority in you, God says, submit to them. Comply with their laws. So why do we need to submit ourselves? Here in verse 1 to 7, Paul cites some reasons why we need to submit ourselves in our authorities. Number one reason is that God has established these authorities. Again, babasahin ko ulit sa verse 1. It says here, Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. So, hindi po basta-basta na yung mga tao na nasa government or the people who govern us ay delegated by man. Ang sabi dito, it is God established. So, ang Panginoon po ang nagtalaga sa kanila and it is it is our duty to comply, right? It, our, it, is, it is our duty to comply dito po sa mga taong may authority. God has established this authority. So, number two reason, there is judgment. In verse 2, it says here, Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. So, sino nga bang may gusto ng judgment, right? Everyone, I believe wala pong may gusto. So, you need to submit yourself with the authority or else there will be judgment, right? Merong kaparusahan or if you don't submit, right? Magkakaroon ka ng, uh, let's say, if you don't submit, magkakaroon ka ng maybe sanction or there will be judgment, okay? And the third reason why we need to comply with our authorities is that there is terror and fear. So here, bakit nagkakaroon ng terror and fear? Of course, there is a rule, there is an authority. Why? Bakit nagkakaroon ng terror and fear? God has made, God has delegated our authorities to be here to bring us good things, right? But, paano nagkakaroon ng terror and fear? It is because when we do not comply with our authorities, we do not submit ourselves. Of course, magkakaroon tayo ng takot, right? Halimbawa, we, we, we go out. Ngayong, sa, ngayong, ngayong pandemic, right? Lalabas ka. But then, wala kang, you know that wala kang quarantine pass. You don't have quarantine pass, then lalabas ka. Of course, magkakaroon ka ng fear, right? Na baka mamaya huliin ka, tanungan ka ng, ng quarantine pass. So, it doesn't bring terror. The origin is that God has delegated these authorities to give us good things, not terror and fear. Okay? So let us submit ourselves with our authorities. And our number four reason is that 
authorities are agents of wrath. In verse 4, it says here, For he is God's servants to do you good, but if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servants, an agent of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Our authorities are God's servant, right? Dinelegate po sila ng Panginoon to be the judge, right? To give punishment for those who break the laws. But Paul also tells us that we need to submit with our authorities not only because of the possible punishment. Hindi lamang dahil merong punishment na natatakot tayo, that's why we comply. But Paul says, because also of our conscience. So, we need to comply with our authorities with conscience. The book of Romans talks about righteousness. So Paul is telling us to submit ourselves or comply with our authorities because God has made us righteous, right? God has made us good. So we want to comply with our authorities. Hindi yung, it is because of fear that we might get punished. Hindi lamang po dun. So we need to comply with our authorities, with our conscience. Paul also states in verse 6, it says here, This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. And also in verse 7, Give everyone that you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. So Paul says here that, our authorities are God's servant. Okay? Sila po ay mga servant ng Panginoon. So, we need to give what is right, what is right to them. That's why we pay our taxes, right? We pay, we give our revenues because they are God's servant. Paul also say, comply or submit to them with respect and with honor. So, hindi lamang po, yun nga po yung sinasabi ni Paul na wag lamang po tayong mag-submit sa ating authorities, right? With with fear. Diba? Nandun yung takot sa punishment. But Paul says, we need to submit with them with respect and honor, right? So not just to be afraid with the punishment, but we need also to submit to our authorities with respect and honor. So God wants us to comply with the laws and God wants us to submit ourselves with our authorities. Amen po ba? And in verse 8 to 10, this is my second point. It is to love one another. In verse 8, it says here, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another, for he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. So Christ came here on earth to fulfill the law. Amen? And so for us, for also for us to fulfill the law, we need to clothe ourselves with Jesus Christ. Clothe ourselves with Jesus Christ means to love one another. Jesus was deaf to love us all, so we are also in debt to love one another. You might be asking, paano nga ba natin mahalin ang bawat isa? Paano ba natin mahalin ang isa't isa? It says here in verse 9, The commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and what other commandments there may be. It says, this is loving one another. Right? If you do this, if, if we comply, if we comply ourselves dito sa mga commandments ng Panginoon, this is showing love to one another. Amen? Paul also summed this up in one rule, which is, love your neighbor as yourself. So, Paano nga ba natin minamahal ang ating mga sarili? Of course, we care so much for ourselves. We give care, right? We want the best for ourselves. Okay? We mean no harm for ourselves. So, ganito daw po natin mahalin ng ating mga neighbors. God says, love your neighbor as you have that love for yourself. Yun po ang naisabihin ni Paul. So, let us love our neighbors. Sino nga ba ang ating mga neighbors? It doesn't only mean na yung kapitbahay po ninyo, yung malapit sa bahay ninyo, hindi lamang po sila. But it is for every people that is around you. It can be your colleagues, 
your family, your friend, even your enemy, and even a stranger. God says you need to love them all. So this is the law of God, to love one another. And we need to comply with this because God is our ultimate authority. Amen? Just like how Jesus Christ submits with his authorities, right? He even submits with the Romans that he even crucified and died for us. But it is because it is the will of the one who has the greatest authority. It is God. So if we clothe ourselves with Jesus Christ, we have the love of Jesus Christ. And so if we have the love of Jesus Christ, there we can already give love to one another. So clothe ourselves with Jesus Christ. And in verses 11 to 14, and this is my point three, walk in the light. In verse 11, it says here, And do this understanding the present time. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. So in this verse, Paul is telling us to understand the timing of God. Right? Do you know the timing of God? Paul is speaking about the coming of Christ. So do you know when the timing of God? When will Christ come back? Do you know? Definitely not. What Paul is saying is that, kailangan na po natin gumising sa ating pagkakatulog. Okay? We need to be prepared. We need to prepare ourselves. So, kailangan natin maging handa. Because the end time is near. Because the coming of Christ is near. Because when the time came, nababalik na po ang Panginoon. He will come with fury, with His legions, and with the sword on His hands to bring judgment to the whole earth. The question is, are you prepared? Prepared po ba tayo? Or mabibigla na lang tayo na wala na yung mga kasamaan natin? Di natin alam na naiwan na pala tayo. We've been left, right? Nandun na sila sa heaven. So Paul is telling us, wake up. Prepare yourself. God is coming. Christ is coming. The end is near. That's why in verse 12, it says here, the night is nearly over, the day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Here, Paul is telling us to put aside our darkness deeds and to put on the armor of light. Well, so what does it mean? It means that we need to walk in the light of Christ. We need to walk in the ways of God. If you think you are a sinner, you need to repent now. We need to do what is right in the eyes of God. Brothers and sisters, this is where we end. And I want you to reflect in your life today. Ask yourself, are you walking in the light of God? Are you walking in the ways of God? If not, you need to clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. How can we clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ? Brothers and sisters, we need to submit to our authorities. We need to love one another and you need to walk in the light of Christ. Yun lamang po and so we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, O oh God, for your word. We pray that every word that you give us, Father, is that we will put it into action. May you humble us, Lord to submit to our authorities and may you give us a loving heart for us to love one another and clothe us God with the spirit of Christ Jesus to help us to love our neighbors oh God we lift up our lives unto you we surrender all our fears in life to you oh God Father we thank you and this is all we pray Amen so see you again tomorrow on our bread and breakfast. God bless everyone and bye.